Losing hair can be devastating at any age, but particularly when you're very young. And when it happened to Will Slater starting in his teens, he was determined to figure out why and how to fix it. And he created the Hair Guard site to share what he found. Will teamed up with his brother Gus, who with a first class degree in chemistry, was able to bring his scientific mind to the problem and to Hair Guard, which now offers both information and products to those struggling with hair loss. Piecing together the limited studies out there, they came up with a solution that's accessible to anyone and has pretty much been staring us all right in the face, and that's scalp massage. So today Gus is going to explain why they believe scalp tension is a major contributor to hair loss, particularly in men, what they learned along the way in researching the various interventions, how massage can help and how much of it we need what we can do ourselves at home and the device they created to make it easier. Gus, welcome and thank you for joining me. Good morning, Claire. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, it was your brother, William, I believe, who ended up doing a lot of digging for solutions to his own hair loss, uh, which I believe started at quite a young age. Do you want to tell us what happened and why you ended up getting involved in a business with him? Yeah, sure. So Will is my brother. He's four years older than me. But in his early 20s, he started experiencing pretty aggressive hair loss, um, which, you know, for anyone is, um, is, is painful and kind of distressing. And Will actually tried using, you know, this, the, the go-to medications that you can typically get when you have hair loss, uh, male pattern baldness. Um, but unfortunately, neither of them worked. And he actually got some quite nasty side effects from one of those um, medicines. So, you know, he what was a bit scared. side effects? One of the side effects from uh, the, the medicine minoxidil was actually these kind of dark rings around his eyes. Um, it is, it's one of the more common side effects, not that it happens that common, but it, if there are side effects, that tends to be one of them. Um, irritation on the scalp. And then, um, he also used a drug called finasteride and it, it blocks, it basically blocks your testosterone or your DHT. Um, and that can have some impact on your libido actually and, and other related things. So it's quite scary being, you know, a young 20 year old guy and um, having these potential side effects. That is a lot to deal with at a young age, actually. And I mean, one of the things I was going to you know, say is that with a lot of the conversations I have around, it's usually connected to aging, the conversations I have, but, yep. you know, I never want to give people the impression that ha I had a conversation the other week about how to tackle graying hair naturally. And it's like, for some people, graying hair is absolutely fine. In fact, people look brilliant with a head full of beautiful silver locks and mm -hmm. all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, same with wrinkles. Some people uh, want to do more about it. Other people see that as part of just the, the natural process of aging to be embraced, like they've earned these wrinkles. Um, and hair loss, people deal with that differently as well. Some some people will just feel like, well, that's that's how it is. But there are others, and you know, I can really appreciate that at a young age in particular, you're gonna wanna do something about it. What, what happened from there? This basically sent Will down a bit of a rabbit hole because he was like, he, he didn't wanna use these traditional drugs anymore, but he did wanna figure out what was really going on with his hair loss and how can he fix it with maybe a more natural approach. I mean, there's so much hair loss research out there. It's impossible to, um, it's almost impossible to get a clear understanding of, of what's really going on. Um, but over the course of all this digging, he basically uh, started uncovering patterns and, and certain things that he knew or thought would help. But he actually began publishing his research just on a, on a, you know, on a basic website because he thought, you know, it's helpful for me to um, put together my thoughts and, and document what I found. And it may be helpful to other people. Um, and he didn't really expect much of it, but over time, publishing more and more research, essentially, the website started getting a lot of organic traffic. You know, people were finding his research and um, were interested to, to see what he found and his take on hair loss. And um, that basically grew into something where Will realized, you know, there's a lot of other people in this situation where they've tried the traditional approach and it hasn't worked for them. Um, and they're looking for an alternative that's perhaps more natural or, you know, is a more holistic approach. And I mean, aside from autoimmune conditions like alopecia, what do we know about the typical causes of hair loss? If you do some research 
when you when you look at male pattern baldness in particular, what you'll tend to find straight away is that it's caused by this DHT uh, by this hormone called DHT, um, which is actually what the the drug that we mentioned earlier blocks. Um, it's it's similar to testosterone, but it's actually more potent. Paradoxically, if you take finasteride, um, which basically inhibits the amount of DHT in your blood by sort of seventy percent, so it's it's a large amount. It, it can stop your hair loss, but you know, if you've already lost half your hair, it doesn't actually really regrow very much. So there's more to the puzzle than just simply blocking this DHT hormone. And that's where it actually gets quite complicated um, or, or there's more to it. Our, our belief is that DHT is involved in this process where it's an inflammatory process and it, it actually causes the skin and the scalp to kind of change and harden and become less less supple and elastic and sort of stiffer and um, more fibrotic. Fibrosis or fibrotic tissue is like scar tissue. Um, and the blood flow to this tissue is really impaired and um, it doesn't get much oxygen and nutrients. And as a result, uh, you know, it cuts off the blood supply to these hair follicles and it actually kind of constricts them so that they can't grow to the full normal thickness. And that's why over time you tend to see hairs miniaturize and get thinner and sort of weaker. Um, but this process of uh, sort of remodeling of the tissue doesn't easily reverse. Um, so that's why when you take a DHT blocker like this uh, medicine, it can you know, stop the process from getting worse because it puts a halt on it, but you've already reached this, this place where your tissue is kind of half what it was. It's not as healthy as it used to be. It regrows a bit, but it doesn't you know, fully regrow. You don't see guys, you typically don't see guys who have lost most of their hair. They start taking this, this drug and then they you know, regrow back to their youthful hairline. It tends to be 10, maybe 15% regrowth, and then it plateaus. And that's because you know, you've stopped it getting worse and you've maybe helped it a little bit, but you haven't reversed that uh, sort of tissue back from this almost scar-like state back to a supple sort of, if you pinch the back of your hand, you can see how malleable it is. That's kind of the problem that uh, we found. And how did you find that? I mean, how did you work <laughs> that out? And is it, is it something that's widely known? No, not at all. So um, like I said, you know, this is not widely known about research. It's not, it's definitely not widely accepted. We've come to this conclusion after doing tons of research ourselves. There are some really impressive guys in the hair loss space who do, do an amazing job of research and they've sort of put all the pieces together themselves as well and helped all of us to understand this slightly uh, obscured mechanism um, behind hair loss. Uh, so yeah, it's it's it's. I can't claim it myself by any means. It's it's a a lot of people in the space who've contributed and helped us all get a better understanding. So what was the kind of timeline on this? And in terms of you joining Will in this search, you know, he was doing all this research. He was thinking there's got to be a better way. A lot of us want to find more natural solutions to things now. I think we realise that the more aggressive the treatment, there's always going to be you know, for every pro, there's going to be a con there. And that's yeah. certainly what I can see emerging in the field of aesthetics, you know. So um, how did that all come together between the two of you? Will was doing his research on the side and publishing it on this on this website. And that was sort of beginning to gain momentum. At the time, I was actually studying chemistry at university. And then I finished my degree and um, was kind of you know, not sure what I was going to do. And Will said to me, I've built this website and it's getting a lot of um, visitors to it. So people are interested. Maybe we could actually formulate a product and launch it based off the research that we've uncovered uh, versus, you know, the, the traditional stuff that, that you might find um, in a pharmacy. I was excited by it. I thought, you know, hair loss runs in the family, so I'm probably going to go bald as well unless I find a solution. So uh, I was really excited to join and um, I basically was doing the product development and um, yeah, we launched a, a serum actually um, was our first product to, to help with hair loss. And what, what did the serum do? If you use minoxidil, which is the, the traditional serum that you might use, it just has one ingredient and um, it does help with blood flow, but 
that's basically the only thing. We knew that there was more to it. You know, there's DHT, there's blood flow, there's trying to reverse this uh, remodeling process. So we basically put in a lot of research-backed ingredients that could tackle it from multiple angles and in a more holistic way. Because when it comes to hair loss, there are a lot of factors that can drive it. You know, if you have poor nutrition or if you're really stressed, it actually aggravates that inflammatory process, which um, drives the remodeling. So if you can tackle your hair loss from as many different angles as possible, it's more than likely going to help or work better. And so we try to put that into a bottle, not using minoxidil because it can have some side effects. And we went for a more plant-based approach because there's a lot of research showing that some plant extracts and actives can actually have an amazing effect on stimulating hair growth or, or blocking THT topically in the scalp. Um, so yeah, we tried to put it all in a bottle and uh, that was our first product. Okay. And how effective did you find just that topical treatment? It was a bit mixed, to be honest with you. I think for a first iteration, you're never going to hit it out, out the path. Um, but it was promising. And, and were people you know, microneedling that? I want to come on to sort of microneedling yeah. and other, but, but were you recommending that, because microneedling in itself can really, um, it can work wonders in those situations. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. And I was just about to, to mention that. But yeah, our second product was literally a, a, a microneedling device. Um, the research shows that the results from microneedling alone, like you say, or with a topical is incredible and can three to five X the results. So yeah, we yeah my husband it. and my dad have been microneedling and my dad yeah. just did it after he noticed my husband's results and they microneedle <laughs> with a uh, serum that contains um, growth factors. My dad is 80 now, but I mean, we got we got some laugh really when he first started using it because he got these little tough, very fine hair, but were, that were definitely coming in at the back. And then he grew a covering at the back of his head. It was like, we still can't go for it. It was quite yeah, miraculous. Wow. He hasn't got a full head of hair, but a lot of people said, well, what about just trying the microneedling on its own? And that would be the place to start, wouldn't it? Um, for, for somebody as a kind of low cost starting point try the microneedling. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I always say the, the biggest bang for your buck is a, is a Dermarola or microneedling device because you can get them, you know, $20 for or, or 10, 15 pounds for a good one. And um, it, it gives amazing results. And you're always, if you're, whatever you're doing, it's always going to be made better by using Dermarola. And you take, took a, a step further by inventing a device that basically manipulates manipulates or, or um, massages the scalp. So that it makes a lot of sense based on what you were saying about this kind of scar tissue forming. You know, you want to get in there and actually yeah. start freeing that up. But I mean, what, what led to that discovery? And, you know, just tell us about uh, what you were seeing with head massage and then hair mm -hmm. regrowth. Well, if I just take a step back and just mention that at, at the start when we launched this serum, you know, we hadn't really uncovered the full... Um, picture with regards to the, the scalp tissue, you know, we thought let's just package as many, um, you know, growth factors and DHD blockers into one bottle and that should hopefully work and pair it with a derm roller, which was good. But, you know, then we started finding out about this, this remodeling of the tissue um, primarily through yeah research papers that, that we came across. There was an incredible study in 2015, which, modeled it was a computer model where because you have muscles around your scalp you have these ones at the front and you have some at the back and then you have this tissue along the top of your scalp and they ran a computer model where it said um you know if these muscles are pulling down tight the front and the back which is what they're doing what does that look like in terms of the like the stress the, the pulling apart forces within the tissue on the scalp and really interestingly at the points with the highest amount of stress mirrored those exactly where you lose hair first as a man, which is typically your temples and your crown. So in the computer model, these areas were the, the points of highest stress. And so this was really insightful. You know, it started people thinking, is this pulling apart this tension force the cause of or a driver or involved with the progression of pan hair loss? And then some other researchers saw that original paper and thought, well, what happens if we force these muscles and the scalp to relax, um, you know, effectively getting rid of all that, that scalp tension? And so what they did was they took a group of men with um, hair loss 
and they injected Botox into these muscles. Um, that which, was going to be my next question. What about yeah. Botox? So yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it forces the muscles to relax. Um, that's what Botox does. And as a result, uh, they actually got some amazing regrowth with the participants. So this was another clue in, you know, what is going on here? We see that the the, the stress, the, the tension mirrors where you lose hair. And then if you relax these muscles, it um, it can regrow. And so that that was a big indicator to us that this is, is a really good theory and, you know, it could be watertight. So you started to look at massage as a way of relaxing the muscles primarily, or is it about... Um trying to manipulate the tissue both yeah <laughs> probably <laughs> both actually you know but i think there's two things going on with with hair loss one is that the muscles around the scalp are pulling tight and this is causing the inflammation where there's a lot of this tension force so it's causing inflammation in the scalp and then as a result of that inflammation it's causing the tissue to remodel and become you know stiff and and fibrotic and doesn't have the same blood flow that it used to. And that that's what constricts and causes the hair to miniaturize. So with massages, the idea is that it's twofold. One is that you're sort of stretching and relaxing the muscles around the scalp to stop that uh, tension from happening. So that's, that's blocking it from getting worse. And then secondly, if you massage the tissue, then it helps to, re you know, helps to make it healthier and restore that blood flow. You know, if you massage scar tissue it actually makes it more supple and it can bring back healthy blood flow to the tissue over time so massages are like a, a one-two punch in terms of stopping it from getting worse and actually helping to reverse that that remodeling that happened earlier and and that's the really hard part that most traditional therapies don't tackle you know they either stop it getting worse or they temporarily halt it but they don't really do much to reverse the damage that's already been done and scalp massages seem to be a really effective way to one stop uh, the progression of further hair loss by you know relaxing these scalp muscles similar to botox you know you're you're forcing them to relax it's a stretch and then secondly it's also targeting the damage that's already been done to the scalp by um you know helping to restore blood flow if you massage a scar then it, it helps to you know, make it more like normal tissue again. And that's basically what, what what's happening with these scalp massages. So the device you've created, and you very kindly sent one for my husband to try out, which he's already been doing. He sits there, you know, this is encouraging him to take naps, I have to say, in the <laughs> afternoon. He goes sloping off and sits with his head massager off. But it's basically, yeah. it's yeah. just tightening, squeezing and releasing, squeezing and releasing. So that's obviously designed to kind of get the blood flow going. I mean, how is that working more specifically? Well, we're trying to mimic that, you know, doing a scat massage with your hands, but when you do it with your hands, it's pretty tiring and you need to do it for 15, 20 minutes a day. So we designed this product to help try and do that in an automated way. And the way it works, like you said, is you wear it, it's a headset and it has these air bladders and they inflate. And when they inflate, it sort of rises up and then pauses for a second and then deflates and it slips back down. And so through this, um, you know, up and down motion, first of all, it's, it's creating like a pressure band, which is rising up. And so you can imagine that it's, if it just keeps on doing this, then the idea is it helps these muscles to relax, which is part one, you know, helping to stop the tension in the first place. And then part two is that as this, as the scalp sort of rides up with the, the grow band with the motion, um, you can see it actually kind of, if you use it on someone who's bald, so they haven't got any hair covering their scalp, you can see it actually causes the tissue to kind of crinkle and crease a bit because it's like, you know, getting squished together. And this, any kind of manipulation or massage of the tissue in that way is going to help with increasing blood flow temporarily there and then, but also, like we said, reverse this, this remodeling that's happened and help to make it a healthier tissue again. And so you, know, you just wear it for sort of 15 minutes a day, switch it on, um, let it do its thing. And it, it just massages your scalp for you in these sort of multiple ways, which we think target and hair loss and 
the most effective way. Yeah, to try and quite relaxing it. as well. Um, it is quite relaxing. He yeah. quite enjoys it. <laughs> um, it's an easy one to do. That's that's for sure because you're literally just sitting there and you can read and and just and just um, have that work away on your scalp. I mean, fifteen to twenty minutes. How did you reach that? We basically did some some work with the blood flow uh, monitor. So we we put these little pads on our scalp and we monitored the the blood flow before before during and after use to see how blood flow was affected over that time and you know five five minutes is too short um half an hour is great when it comes to hair loss you know the most effective thing you can do is something that's done consistently day in day out for months and months and so most of the results come within the first 15, 20 minutes. If you do it for longer, you will get better results, but are you going to stick with it long-term? Maybe not, not as likely. So we, we say 15 to 20 minutes sort of is, it hits that sweet spot. It can fit in with um, everyday life. And exactly. well, let's start with Will. What, what happened when he started doing this routinely? Well, I mean, to start with his hair, I can send, if you haven't seen, I can send some photos. Yeah, we'll put them on was, screen. They'll be yeah. magically appearing anytime now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, his hair was was pretty receded. Um, he had, you know, at the temp at the temples, it had gone far back as well as the the frontal hairline. Um, but upon using the grow band, within six weeks or so, it basically stopped stopped his hair loss. And over the period of the last couple of years, um, he's managed to regrow his hair pretty substantially. It's not perfect by any means, but it's it's a lot better than what it was and we can't attribute it just to the grow band because he does do a few other things but he did a lot before the grow band but since using the grow band that is his main thing but um yeah it's so presumably he's focused on lifestyle um you know you touched on that diet anti-inflammatory diet and um i spoke to a nutritionist just the other week about that so hopefully <laughs> that gives us a, a a reference for people to look back at as well but um He's, is he also microneedling, using a serum, uh, the growth factor serum? What else is he doing in the mix? Nowadays, because he's kind of, um, you know, managed to stop the progression of hair loss and actually reverse it, he doesn't need to be as aggressive um, with all, of, all the different things he can use. So basically, he's just on, we kind of call it maintenance mode, where he uses the grow band, you know, a couple of times a week. And I think that's about it. But um, yeah, back in the day, he definitely, you know, threw everything at the wall to see what, what worked and unfortunately not much did. And that's, that basically started us on us on this path to where we are now. Yeah. Um, I mean, aside from Will's own results, have you done any, um, you know, clinical trials? Is there more evidence around the effects of, of head massage for hair regrowth? We would love to do a clinical study. Unfortunately, being a relatively small company, it's just not feasible given you know our budget and all that. There's been some great research in terms of yeah, scalp massages. Um, one of the leading researchers, Rob English, did a study looking at standardized scalp massages. So he asked people to do scalp massages in a particular way and then surveyed them at a later point and sort of found out what they've been doing, how often and how long. And I think um, most participants after sort of six or seven months, about 70% of them had reported hair loss stabilization or regrowth, which is actually really impressive for just doing scalp massages. And there's been a lot of research come out in the last four or five years to do with looking into Botox more. Um, so there's a study from 2020, which looked at, it compared two groups. One was using finasteride which is the dht blocker and one used finasteride and botox and uh the one using both treatments they saw significantly better results um and there's just been quite a few different studies like that that have helped um reinforce or add to the research that showing that this this pathology is is uh, involved it is involved in the progression of hair loss and what's nice, there, there may be people that want to try a, a device like yours. Um, and it's also nice to know that, that people can have, you know, have a go themselves. We'll mm -hmm. maybe try and link, find that um, research that you, you talked about 
so yeah. they can have a look at the exercises because you know, having having some solutions to try yourself at home. In terms of massage then, is it really something that you have to do daily for quite a long time? What what does that look like? I'm, I'm suspecting already that it's not something you can completely give up. You know, you do it for six months or whatever, and then yeah. it's like, that's done for the rest of your life. What does the overall program, do you, do you think, look like for people who are either trying it themselves or home, at home or using a device? I think it depends on, you know, how... Um, far down the track you are with your hair loss. If you're doing it as a preventative measure, you know, you're in your mid twenties or whatever, and maybe you're starting to see a bit of hair loss. You really don't need to do it that often. I believe, um, you know, maybe a few times a week for 10 minutes might be sufficient, but if you're, you know, if you've lost a lot of hair, um, and you're trying to stop that progression and reverse it, it's going to naturally, it's going to take longer, um, and require more to do that. So I'd say, yeah, based off this research um, by Rob English, which was serving people who did massages, I think a lot of people saw results after six months. So six months is a good um, sort of time frame to have in mind that you'll need to commit to this to see results. Um, but the great news is that instead of, you know, with minoxidil or finasteride, results tend to start quite well and then plateau. With this, it tends to just generally keep getting better and better over time the more you do it. I think one so of the perhaps daily was, for six months would that be the thinking? Daily for six months, and then you could start reducing the frequency. So you're just kind of keeping it going a few times. Yeah, a week. exactly. The way I think about it, you know, is if you have a ball rolling downhill, um, picking up speed, you can kind of think of hair loss like that, like it's it's gaining momentum, and so to to stop it, you know, is going to take quite a lot of effort and to reverse it again takes effort but once it's on this upwards trajectory where you're sort of regrowing hair it doesn't take nearly as much time um, to keep it in that direction or at least maintain maintain it where it is so there's definitely you know if you can be enthusiastic and motivated about it at the start fantastic and then you know you can wean yourself off it and it, it won't take as much time do you use it as a preventative or are you you're not doing anything at the moment? I use it as a preventative. Fortunately, my hairline is quite good. Maybe that's because I've, I've been <laughs> investigating this stuff for six years, so I kind of know what to do. Um, but yeah, I just use the grow band as a preventative a couple of times a week at the moment. Yeah. Um, and your advice then, because you're saying, I know what to do, uh, for anybody who's looking at preventative right now, what are you doing? You're using that. So I would recommend um, one, derma rolling, like we talked about. It's cheap, but it's very effective. Two, use a, use a topical um, serum. You can use 5% minoxidil, but just be wary that you might get some irritation or side effects. It's, it's low chances, but it's a possibility. But obviously, if you combine minoxidil and microneedling, uh, it works effectively. Um, otherwise, you can use a more natural serum out there there's there's quite a few uh three is scalp massages whether that's doing it with your own hands it which is fantastic and i highly recommend it it's just very tiring maybe if you have a um a, a lovely partner they can do it for you but i doubt that's <laughs> for many people daily uh, for six months might be pushing yeah, it but let's see <laughs> yeah, exactly. um otherwise yeah a, a grow band pro or we have um one of these little units which i use in the shower it's just a it's like a little bristle brush and i just use that in the shower for two minutes when mm -hmm. I so a scalp massager in the shower great idea mm -hmm. and it and it also exfoliates the skin of it which helps to kind of get rid of any uh built up grease or gunk which can can happen from hair care products in terms of optimizing you know lifestyle and diet it's it's everything that you've heard before get good sleep try to avoid stress eat well um i'm sure you're you're very familiar with all that stuff yeah yeah, it, yeah. It regular helps. viewers will be used to uh used to that information but just so important it shows in our skin it shows in absolutely everything our nails everything um exactly. and we know that inflammation is the the biggest driver of all the signs of aging which of course hair loss is one um mm -hmm. does this work equally well do you think for women head massage you know i'm not an expert on female pattern hair loss um, my understanding is that I think it, 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 I don't think it's necessarily the same mechanism. Um, I think 
female patent hair loss tends to be driven more by hormones, for example, you know, after you've just given birth or going through menopause um, or diet. Um, so it's, I think scalp massages in general are always going to be a good thing. Um, but I don't know that it will, because it's, you know, I think it's a different mechanism. You, you don't tend to have these sort of chronically contracted muscles in women the same way that you do with men. So whilst I think scalp massages are helpful, I'm, I can't vouch that it will be as effective for women. Yeah. Um, you haven't had a lot of feedback then from uh, female customers to say it's it's really mainly men that you're hearing from, is it? Predominantly, yeah. I mean, we, we cater towards men. We do have female customers. And um, as with all our customers, we say, you know, the more ways that you can tackle hair loss, the better. I have seen a lot of um, female testimonials around uh, microneedling for hair loss. So, I mean, it's not, it's not uh, a completely negative picture out there for women. Um, you know, there are things worth trying. So in, in the description, I can link to um, oh, yeah. a few studies around that. Um, and is there anything else that you recommend people try? Do you think we've covered everything that you are aware of? Yeah, I think, I think those are the big ones. Um, you know, if you are open to trying, um, drugs or, or pharmaceuticals, then by all means, try it because in general, you know, it's going to help things. Um, but if you are using just those by themselves, just be wary that you might not be treating the root cause. And as such, you know, you kind of need to stick with it for life. Um, whereas if you go for an approach that um, tries to tackle the root cause, then hopefully you can fix it there and then, and then you don't need to deal with it on an ongoing basis. Yeah, I think we've covered, you know, everything that gives you the biggest bang bang for your buck. And um, just final question. I mean, in terms of customers and people that you know and your brother, for someone who has started out with quite significant hair loss, um, have, have you seen many cases of people being able to turn that around in a really dramatic way where they've kind of maybe... Been, had bold, bold patches, almost fully bold patches, where there is now some coverage. What's more typical is, you know, let's say that you've lost 50% of your hair. Rather than getting it back to 100%, you might get it back to sort of 80%, um, which is kind of what happened with my brother, Will. Um, he didn't get, you know, 100% regrowth, but he's definitely up in like the 80s, maybe the 90s. And I'd say that's actually more realistic. And if you can do that, then um, that, that's a fantastic result. Absolutely. And that's a, that's a good spot to finish on. Thank you so much, Gus. Really appreciate your time. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Claire. So that was a really interesting take there from Gus on what could potentially be a major contributor to hair loss and an effective non-invasive solution. Just last week, I talked about how I find a simple little facial roller to be one of the best anti-aging skin tools I own and boosting circulation and keeping face and scalp tissue healthy through massage really makes so much sense. So I'll link to all the supporting information and research in the description below, including to the Grow Band device itself. And as we mentioned in our conversation, my husband is putting the Grow Band to the test. Just a few weeks into using it, he says he notices that whereas before his scalp did indeed feel rigid when he was trying to massage it with his fingertips, he feels much more movement there now, which in itself is interesting. So we've taken before pictures and we'll see over the next six months whether there's a visible difference in hair growth there and report back to you. I've linked below to the video I made sharing my dad and husband's hair regrowth results using microneedling and the callosum hair serum, which we also mentioned in the conversation. And so my husband will be looking to add to his results with the grow band. And if you enjoy my content and haven't already, then I would greatly appreciate it if you could hit subscribe on YouTube or follow if you're listening to the podcast, because it really does help me reach more people, grow the channel and be able to attract great guests to help educate us. So I will include in the description a link to my website, honest.scot, where you'll find more information and advice from me, a journalist, exploring how to age well, look and feel good for longer, along with a link to my monthly newsletter where I round up all the latest from me so you don't miss a thing. 
But for now, thank you so much for joining me today.